Hey there, how's it going? I've been busy this week. I made a game for the 8 Bits to Infinity Easy Jam. I streamed a bunch of the process and it was a great time talking with everybody while working. I did realize how much slower I worked when I have conversations to distract me, but I have to say it was worth it and a lot of fun. Thank you to everyone that made it out, and I'm sorry to those of you whose time zones don't really align with mine. I'm also working on several other videos right now similar to the one hour challenge video I put up a couple of days ago. And on top of that I still had the whole real life family and adulting things that I had to do. I talked about feeling a bit burnt out with Monkeys with Guns last week, and the idea of doing a design-focused episode. A lot of you seem to like the idea, so let's go ahead and get into it. I will start off with a disclaimer. These are my opinions, so don't take anything I say as fact or a rule. As with everything, always try and test for yourself to see what works for you. So I get suggestions for Monkeys with Guns all the time. That's definitely not a complaint. Some suggestions have been really helpful, and it means that people are engaging enough with the game to give their opinions. As a designer, I feel that it's very important for me to listen to all feedback from my players. But I need to filter it to make sure that a good idea doesn't fundamentally change the game. Because even a great idea cannot work if it's put in the wrong game. It took me a good while to nail down what I wanted Monkeys with Guns to be. And it was actually because I received so many suggestions that would push the game in different directions that I had to really figure out what I wanted. Let me back up a little bit. The game type I'm sticking with for Monkeys with Guns is multiplayer arcade. Think games like Street Fighter 2 or Marvel vs. Capcom. The core of which for me means that a player can walk up and jump into the next game without needing to do anything but pick up the controller, formally putting in a quarter. And the players have access to all of the content like characters and levels from the start. Minus easter eggs, of course. Now, I get suggestions all the time to add unlockable elements like levels, weapons, and most often skins to monkeys with guns. Which the arcade fighting games did start doing when they moved to home consoles from what I remember. I haven't played a fighting game for a good while, so I'm not sure if that's still the case. Now you just have to pay or something, right? I don't know. I get the idea. Reward the player for putting in time and effort. It helps give them a sense of investment, and a goal that can keep them playing. So, why have I decided I don't want that in Monkeys with Guns? For me, it came down to a couple of things. First is that from a design focus, this game is a local multiplayer game. So there's a really good chance that the first time this game is opened, it will be with a group of people. I remember being a kid and it was always so frustrating to try and play a fighting game at a friend's house that didn't have all the characters unlocked. Luckily those were the days of cheat codes so it wasn't usually too bad. I might be showing my age here. But I always found the process of needing to unlock characters and elements like this to be more annoying than anything else. Not usually in single player, but definitely if the game is focused on multiplayer. Second, Monkeys with Guns will be a small indie game release. That's not to put down the project or anything. There are just hundreds, if not thousands, of games released each month. With that many options for players, I feel like I want to make sure that I respect their time and not add things to the game that would discourage them from playing right off the bat. Professionally, I work in the advertising world, so I'm used to viewers actively trying to not see the things I make. So I may be underestimating how much time players are willing to give to a game that they purchased, but I don't think I'm underestimating how hard it is to get a friend to play a new game with you. And if I required the players to either start playing without being able to use all of the cool content, because of course you gate the cool stuff, or make one player grind to unlock stuff in a game that's not focused on single player gameplay, neither of those sound like a great experience to give to someone who bought your game. There will be those that absolutely love the game and are willing to put in that much time and energy. I already have people sharing with me the fun that they've been having with the beta. And it's amazing that even in its current state, players can have a lot of fun. But the vast majority of people that will try the game out after release will have never seen these devlogs, won't be as invested in the game, and I want to make sure that they find something right away that they like. I don't know, I just envision someone sitting down to play, excited about a skin that they saw on a screenshot or something, but then being disappointed when they find out they can't use it right away. It might just be me projecting, but I very much want to avoid that experience for players. And third, after demoing this game at several events, one thing I've noticed is that the different skins really help to draw in new players. Also, most players don't stick with the same skin every round. That one actually surprised me. I figured players would pick a skin they identify with and keep using it, but so far that hasn't been the case. Players have tended to really enjoy picking a different skin each round, so locking any content, especially skins, I feel like would really reduce players' enjoyment. I don't want any of this to come across like the suggestions to add unlockables is a bad idea, or that it shouldn't be made. These types of suggestions make me think critically about my reasoning and why I'm doing certain things. At first I thought unlockables could actually be a good thing and I was trying to figure out how I would integrate them. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized all of the points that I just talked about. In summary, my vision for Monkeys with Guns is that any player can get the game, open it up with a group of friends, and everyone can enjoy all of the content the game has to offer from the get-go, not feel like a job has been given to them to get the rest of the game. Unlockable content has its place in a lot of games. It's just not the right fit for this one. I hope that was interesting, and gives a little more insight into why I've made some of the decisions I'm making. I haven't been super motivated to work on Monkeys with Guns while in quarantine. 
but I did really enjoy digging into why I'm making the choices I am. So let me know if you enjoyed and would like more. If you want to have design chats or just see my process, you can join me on Twitch where I've been making games live. Otherwise, if you have questions or comments, you can leave them below, message me on Twitter, or join the Discord. I'd like to give a huge thank you to my first video producer level Patreons for their support. If you would like to have your name here in future videos and see them before anyone else, the link is in the description. You can get the beta for Monkeys with Guns or play any of my other games at vimlark.itch.io. If you've enjoyed this, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.